Should we start? Let's yeah. start. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is uh, Dave Jensen. Mm. Change the slide. Okay. Change the slide. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my basic introduction. My name is uh, Madhusudan Pathak. You all can call me my spy. And today I'll be talking about AI, artificial intelligence. You all might have heard of it. So first of all, a bit about me. So uh, I am a bachelor student in in University of Padua. I am studying uh, information engineering. Information engineering is a branch term for AI. The ones who study information engineering can choose AI as artificial intelligence in their for the study for specification. Uh, these are some facts about me. If you want to know, so uh, if you want to connect to me and ask me something regarding this uh, speech of today or anything, you can write me a mail on my mail ID or you can connect to me on Instagram. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, this is a big confusion, a very big confusion that I have seen in a lot of people. Whenever we talk about AI, then many people are not even clear that what are actually artificial intelligence. Is. So there is nothing actually or specifically like AI. AI is just an umbrella term. Like when we talk about mathematics, then there is nothing specific or thing called uh, mathematics. Mathematics means addition, subtraction, multiplication. So similarly, AI means these all things like machine learning, deep learning. These all are parts of AI. Yeah. So uh, if you all are interested in uh, in future with AI, then these are again some terminologies that people usually refer whenever they talk about AI. All these fields that you can see, artificial vision, artificial recognition of sound, uh, all are just branches of AI. AI, AI encapsulates all of these things. Okay, so like you all should be clear of what I am talking about. When I am saying AI, I mean all of those things. Okay, yeah. Next slide, please. Okay, for the ones who want to make money, because that's what all want to. So uh, these are some of the stats that you can see how AI is booming in the field of uh, market. And uh, if you study AI, and if you are into this field, you'll probably if you not get into research, then for sure you'll get jobs, and you will get uh, a huge amount of money for studying AI. Uh, there, uh, there is a huge range of scope with respect to job prospects in this field of AI. Next, please. please. So now you all have got what I what I'm about to talk about. That is AI. So now let me just give you a brief uh, description of what AI is and how actually it came to existence. So there is one thing that humans like to do a lot that is being lazy. All humans are extremely lazy in their life, and that is why we keep on inventing and inventing technology, or we keep on working to make things that could make life uh, that could make our life easier. That is the main uh, essence of being human. It has already been. We invented motors because we don't want to work for long. That's why we invented cars. We 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 invented uh, uh, mobile phones because we want to be connected without even writing a letter. That is why the the main concept, the main essence of being human is to be lazy, and that is where the AI comes on. Uh, earlier in the classical computing, uh, we we used to have inputs and we used to uh, write programs for it, and then a computer will give us the output. That was the scene. Uh, we are we are the one who are writing the program. But uh, again, humans are lazy. We don't want to write programs. After a point, it, it was like way too much work to write programs for each and everything. Uh, we don't want to do that much of work. So what we did, we invented a technology that is AI, uh, and specifically we call it machine learning. AI is just an umbrella term. So machine learning is we don't even write the program. We just give inputs and outputs to a system, and that system automatically writes a program. We don't even have to do that. Just a, a result of humans being lazy. We were too much lazy to write programs. That's why we we just gave inputs and outputs, and we said the computer we asked for it to automatically generate a program that would do our work. We did not even want to write programs, and that is why this machine learning came upon. And this machine learning is a huge, huge, uh, huge part of AI. If you will study AI as any form, if you want to go into the research of AI, if you want to go into the business market side of AI, you will have to learn machine learning. Machine learning is basically uh, we want computers to write programs or to understand by themselves. We don't want to teach them. We want that they 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 just take inputs and outputs. They understand how to how to how how to make themselves that they can produce those outputs. This is machine learning in the most simplest form. Yeah. So again, there there is uh, again this was a lot of work again because when we give the outputs and inputs to machine, this is also a work and humans are lazy. So uh, we did not even want to do that, and then we uh, invented or we made a technology called deep learning. 
Deep learning is basically when we do machine learning with help of uh, artificial neural networks. And again, in that we had a, we had one intermediate process. We had small bit of work left. That is the classification and uh, extraction of data. We did not even wanted to do that because humans are lazy. So we even made a process in which the computer will automatically do that as well. It will write the code and it will automatically do the extraction as well. So uh, overall, we don't want to do anything. We just want to give the inputs and outputs and we want machines to do all of the work. And that's why we again invented a new technology called deep learning. And as you can see the trend, it is very clear from past only. The one thing that humans like to do is being lazy. We invented cars because we did not want to walk. In computers, we invented AI or machine learning because we did not want to write codes. And then we invented deep learning because we did not write, we did not want to do the data extraction thing. So again, it's a general trend of women that they keep on inventing te in te technologies so that we don't have to do a lot of work. So again, if you can see the trend, if you can see the pattern, so the next step in being lazy, in being human, is uh, making consciousness. And that is my main topic of this talk, of this speech. Uh, artificial consciousness. Artificial consciousness is not a field yet. It is not, you cannot find it in, in your bachelor's to study. You cannot find it in your master's study. The field is being made currently. Like right? There are two, three scientists in all over the world who are working in this field because it is extremely new. Artificial intelligence itself is new. So artificial consciousness is like one step ahead of artificial intelligence. When we will have human level of intelligence, when we, when we will not have to do any intelligent work, then we will need something to do the consciousness work, the thing that humans are uh, good at, and the thing that computers cannot come even close to at this rate. Again, just a result of human being lazy in some sense. Uh, the consciousness itself is not clear at all. Like Intelligence is uh, somewhat clear what intelligence is. Uh, we have some reference, what is intelligence? But with consciousness, we don't have any idea at this moment what is consciousness. There are a lot of theories of panpsychism. There has been a lot of philosophers in the past who have talked about uh, consciousness. But no one is sure at this date, at this time, that what is consciousness. Everyone just have theories and hypotheses. So the thing is, we are not even clear about consciousness. But humans, again, want to make artificial consciousness. That is my field of study. That is what I want to do in life, to make artificial consciousness. And that field again is a kind of uh, product of humans being lazy because we have, when we will have done the intelligence work, then we will want to do something else, and that would be artificial consciousness. If you want to go in the field of artificial consciousness that is not even made yet, then you will have to uh, first of all study artificial intelligence because, as always, if you have to do multiplication, you'll first have to know what is addition. So, similarly, if you want to work in artificial uh, consciousness, you will first have to understand what is artificial intelligence. And after that only, you can go to the field of artificial consciousness. That is, you will first of all try to understand what is consciousness. A, a lot of philosophy is there. It is kind of philosophical state at this moment. And then you would probably give some algorithm or theorem to make artificial consciousness. Yeah, so uh, why do we want to create artificial consciousness? That is a big question. Because as, I, as I've said, some are like the basic, very basic reasons. Uh, that is uh, inventing, that is a, a part of being lazy. But one very, very, very big reason for working on uh, artificial consciousness is something that you all must have seen in movies. When in, in future, if we suppose that an AI is completely made, a machine is fully capable of doing all intelligent work that a human can do and probably exceed humans because humans have in limited intellect, then there is chances that they will go bad, they will go rogue, and they will start killing humans. Like that's the very famous movie theory. So that is why we want to create artificial consciousness because consciousness links to a part of human aspect that is being wise. And we want to make machine wise as well, not just intellect. Because there is quotation by some famous scientists that uh, the society is gaining intellect way faster than it is gaining wisdom. So uh, if uh, AI or technology will also just gain intellect and, not, and, and will not work upon its wisdom part or, or its, uh, the thing that would make it wise, then th there might be a possibility in which uh, AI or technology could uh, overtake us and like would kill us human and all that we see in movie. So one of the main or the ma most prior reasons for making artificial consciousness is to give computers and machines wisdom as well, along with intellect. So that even if they have a lot of power, a lot of intellect, way more than human, then also they don't kill us or they don't harm us. Similar to how a wise man is supposed to be. A wise person is someone who, who, who is filled of kind, kindness, who, who is filled of forgiveness, that kind of things we want to give in machines. 
and we we, do, we don't want to hard code it because the time has gone in which we used to code in which we used to program machines now the time is uh, in which we want to give computers forgiveness wisdom kindness these kind of things that cannot be like hard coded for computers so this is one of the most prior reasons why people want to create artificial consciousness to give machines wisdom there are some other points as well that are written for peace and uh, for maintaining the wisdom level that I was talking about uh, for uh, for consciousness extension because humans are limited and as we all know that there would be a point on which earth will be gone on which all of the humans would be gone so at that point we need to preserve this consciousness something special that humans have that machines don't have at this moment we want to preserve that thing so that even if the humans are wiped off of the planet or of the universe then also we have consciousness preserved in some form that can sustain uh, the next reason is again for human and being curious like being curious is one of the very fundamental aspects of being human so all the humans all the scientists at this point are just curious what's next that is the sole purpose of their life and for me specifically, why I want to create artificial consciousness, consciousness? Because I just love this field. I love technology, I love creating new things. And I know that at this level, going into artificial intelligence field, there is not much options and chances of research. And that's why if I could do something significant in the field of artificial consciousness, then that would be the best I can do with my life because that would give uh, computers and technology wisdom by which in future it will propagate and uh, ripple in very, very positive uh, effects in the society. So that is all the reasons for why I and some other community wants to work on artificial consciousness. Next slide please. And that would be, uh, like that's all with my speech. And that's all I had to say regarding artificial intelligence and artificial consciousness. I did not go into any specifics of what is AI and how do we make about reinforcement learning, unsupervised learning, because all those things are supposed to be learned by in a class by a teacher. In this speech, I just covered the uh, basic fundamentals and philosophies of artificial intelligence and how we can transcend humanity to artificial consciousness. That was my main topic. So that's all. Thank you. And now I would love to hear your questions. If you have any questions. Sir, uh, so before creating uh, artificial intelligence or artificial consciousness, you have also to learn how the human brain functions. Of course, yeah. So something about biology, something about... Yeah, uh, there is this problem with respect to human ways of working that it is very specific to human. A very basic examples, when you calculate numbers, you add two numbers. There is a specific algorithm that you follow to add two numbers. But computers use a whole different way to add numbers. They convert it into binary, they have binary ways of addition and multiplication. It is a whole different way that is not similar to human. But computers work faster than us. There are various other examples that computers can do better than us. And they do it in a different form than us. So uh, we have seen in past that computers work in a different way, but the, but the way that they work in is faster, efficient, better than humans. So first of all, we'll have to get off this supremacy that humans are best. Humans are not best. Humans are just are good in some aspects. So to make consciousness, obviously, there is a way to understand humans, to understand human brain, but it does not mean that that way is best. It might be the best, but we have seen in the past that the way computers work is different, but it is good. Uh, the best hypothesis at this moment is of quantum computers, if you've heard about it. So quantum computer is a way in which we use quantum phenomena to work with compute computational things. So that is the best thing that humans have at this moment to create consciousness, to use quantum mechanics. Okay, so uh, so uh, let me you want to understand about quantum computers? What is it like? You want to understand about quantum computers? Okay, yeah. So uh, it is a, again a huge topic to be talked and discussed in its own. I would brief it a bit for you all. So uh, in quantum mechanics, there are a lot of phenomena that is very much different from the normal world. Like for an example that people are amazed by. Uh, in quantum mechanics, a single object can exist in two different places at the same time. This is a very common and famous phenomenon. It is called quantum superpositioning. At this moment, in current technology, we are using quantum computers just to do the classical works, like the work that can already be done by computers. We are not using quantum computers in their own native form, in the way, in the thing that they excel at. 
We are, it's like, um, it, it's like using a gun to kill someone by throwing it. We are doing that. We are not using quantum computers in its way, in its special ways. We are using it in a very primitive way by doing something that can also be done by some other computers, but it would take a long time. So, uh, the, the, but there are some, again, some scientists that are working on this field. It is in research still that how can we use those quantum phenomena in, the, in their own native form without using it in, to do some primitive work. So again, this thing is still in very much research, and I would say in hypothesis because no one exactly knows how to use those. But again, this is a very prominent field to make consciousness, and again, scientists are working on it at this moment. Okay, any other question? Yes. <laughs> it's a very general question. Uh, what's your biggest ambition? Ambition in your life. Uh, you mean in the future, what I want? In the future, the biggest ambition. Yeah, uh, for in future, like the ideal case, the best case for my life would be if I could make my own artificial consciousness machine. A, a system that have intelligence as human, even more intelligence, but that also have a consciousness, that also have wisdom, that also have kindness in it, that also have forgiveness. That is my biggest aim in life. That's what I want to do. So, so the... The AI you are going to create is... Not AI, artificial consciousness. Okay, sorry. Artificial consciousness you are going to create is better, is much better than uh, human creation. So, it, it is supposed to, to take mo most of the jobs in, mm -hmm, in the obviously. world. So uh, yeah, I, what I got the question. So, uh, at this moment only, AI has taken already a lot of jobs of humans. Because humans have some specific kind of skill sets that they, are, that they should focus on. Again, as I said, if you would use a gun to throw and kill someone, that is a very stupid thing. Gun can be used as a target and to kill like that. So humans have ways, uh, way more qualities than uh, what AI can do. Like AI can do computation. If you, if you would try to compete with a calculator, that's a stupid thing. Because you, are, you can do more things that a calculator cannot do. So similarly, if you would try to do things that computers can do in future, then you are going to be jobless, like many have been at this moment. Like try to focus on the skill set and the aspects of being human that computers cannot be. The jobs that are more secure at this moment are the job of a scientist, because a computer at this moment cannot be a scientist. An AI cannot be a scientist. A computer does not have imagination. AI does not have imagination. So the person who have imagination, whose job is based on imagination, would always be secure because computers cannot do that at this moment. But if you would do something that computers can do, then it is stupid. If you if you would be a calculator, then that's a stupid because calculators can do that. So uh, if, with respect to this, after I create my artificial consciousness, then obviously a lot of jobs of humans would be would have no meaning because computers would be able to imagine as well. Computers would be able to be uh, to be creative as well. But again, there would be some aspects in which human would excel at because of the evolutionary process. Humans are more evolved. Humans have evolved from millions of years to become this uh, this form that we have. And AI are not that evolved. It would be like that only. Like uh, after humans have been evolved, it does not mean that dogs are not important. They are also a creature. They also exist, and we also exist. At that moment, it would be like the AI or artificial consciousness would be the new humans, and we would be some like uh, monkeys kind of thing. Are you getting what I'm talking about? AC is like the next step in evolution of humans. So. But do you think that it's possible that artificial consciousness will adopt creativity or imagination? Uh, it is possible, it is possible. Because at this moment only, there are some machines that can imagine and that can do creative stuff. At this time only. But again, it is not that wide as humans. We humans are way too much evolved and great at imagination and creativity. And let's say in 20 years, they could do more, they could do better because technology advances. And in 20 years, uh, they would advance enough to even like do more, be more creative than humans because technology advances in a very different path than humans do. So it is very much possible. Do you think they are? Um, um, they are. They can. They can promote the peace, right? And we are hoping that they can. <laughs> like we don't know. Like when a child is born, no one knows he will grow. He will grow up to be a criminal or to be a saint. We don't know. It's like the birth of artificial consciousness. We don't know if it will, uh, in future, it will become a destructive thing or a constructive thing. So we are not sure at this moment. We are hoping that it would do, uh, do things for peace. Because and that's why we are trying to focus on wisdom, part. because wisdom is very much important along with intellect.
because I think uh, the ambition of human is uh, limitless. So, with uh, with a powerful creature like this, they can uh, do anything they want. For example, to start a war. Of course, of course, of course, they can be. At this moment, only AI is used for a lot of bad and wrong things. Yeah. But again, everything have their chances of being bad. And same, the same goes with AI, uh, artificial consciousness as well. But in future, the thing that will change is we won't be in control. Like a monkey cannot control us because we are more advanced than them. Similarly, in future, artificial consciousness, like and by future I mean like 40 years. In 40 years, artificial consciousness would be more advanced than us. Then we won't be able to control them. They would be like the supreme one at that moment. Like humans are kind of supreme one at this moment. We are the ones who pet animals in the zoo. Animals don't pet us. So same would be apply. Uh, same would apply them. So humans won't be able to use machines at that point for their purposes because humans uh, that machines won't be in control of humans. After a point, after a limit, like the humans would lose control of the technology, and the technology will uh, ascend automatically. How after a point, human uh, monkeys we start being monkeys and we started being humans. If you see it from the evolutionary point of view, then things would be more clear. At this moment, the scientists who are working on artificial consciousness are trying to be, work as evolution, are trying to like take evolution to its next step, that is transcending humanity. So it would be like that. And in future, in the best form of artificial consciousness, no one would be in control of those machines. The, those machines would work independently. So if they want peace, they would have peace. If they want war, they would have one war. The humans cannot do anything about it. Thank you. Any more questions? No, 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 yeah, yeah, sir. Okay, like, take a photo. One, two, three. Another, another. Okay. I have to do it like this. One, two, Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>